We're back once again with more insane Reddit stories. I'm Shane, and my guests today, Ian and Anthony. Hello. Welcome Let's back. Let's do this. The boys are back. We are yeah. back. The boys are back and ready for some Reddit stories. Uh, and now, now, <laughs> uh, Anthony, yeah. now you're a veteran. You guys have both been on here before. So yeah. you, you know what's up. Yeah. You know the deal. We got, yeah. we got it. Nothing's going to surprise you this time. Nah, no. just pretty basic stories. No are... terrible behavior that could be solved with years of therapy. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, these are going to be normal. <laughs> All right, let's hop into it. First one comes from True Off My Chest. Got a confession right out the bat. Mm. First time I dressed up for a double date and my friend didn't like it. Okay. Huh. My friend Joel, a 20 year old man, asked me, 21 year old man, to join him for a double date with Jean, a 20 year old woman, and her friend Sam, a 19 year old woman. Joel got a date with Jean, but she wanted to make it a double date as she wanted to introduce Sam to the dating scene in a more friendly kind of way. I agreed to it, but Sam wasn't amused by the idea of me being her date, but agreed because she was happy with just the experience. Why? Well, me and Joel are two totally different types of guys. He is the charming and athletic guy, while I am the chubby and more reserved one. Doesn't help that I am balding this early in life. The times I have met her at university have been while I am wearing the same clothes. I have a set of clothes only for university, sort of like a self-imposed uniform. Every day is different, but I repeat weekly. So yesterday I got my hair cut as low as possible without going into shaving, fixed my beard, and I have to say I was looking mighty fine. Got, <laughs> got, out, my, got out my brand new clothes. Now, today we had our double date after 2 p.m. I arrived late, by, but only by five minutes. Joel was texting me like crazy until I arrived, holding a rose for Sam. I am a bit corny, but I thought it would be a nice gesture. Joel wasn't happy for some reason. Jean looked surprised, but Sam, she smiled widely and her eyes sparkled a bit. We start our date, and Sam and I are having a bit of a blast. We decided to go out bowling before going for ice cream on recommendation from Sam. We got along, but not really enough to say I like her more than a friend. Maybe a second date solo this time would be nice. As we were hanging out, I could feel glances from Joel and small smiles from Jean. I know Jean is smiling because Sam is having fun, but I didn't know why Joel was so angry with me. After the date, Joel unloaded on me, how I was cringe for bringing Sam a rose, that I was, I was there to entertain Sam, not distract Jean from him, that I dressed too formal and too fancy. I was only wearing a white shirt, flannel over shirt, and jeans with my converse. <laughs> He also said I should have stayed at home if I was going to act like I did on the date. I just talked with Sam, shared a meal with her, and went to get her favorite ice cream from her favorite store. He was there, and Gene was 100% on board with the ideas. I barely talked to Gene. He had all the playing field for himself. Not my fault Gene was more interested in seeing her friend happy. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, a shirt with with uh, flannel, jeans, and Converse, as, that's as formal as you can go. Yeah, <laughs> I was, for some reason, like, just with the lead up and, like, the explanation, I'm like, he's a Redditor. I was, like, I was expecting, like, a full-on, like, suit. Like yeah. a tux. Like, <laughs> like a dumb and dumber. Like yeah, like a dumb and dumber, like, yeah. like suit. But, um, no, it sounded like he had, like, a pretty, like, casual, sick fit. It sounds like he was just angry that he wasn't wearing, his friend wasn't wearing like schlubby clothes. I'm wondering yeah. if this friend was hoping that this guy would make him look good. Oh, right. And I think, I think this dude showed up uh, and kind of kind of killed it. And his friend was like, shit, now, now even my date right. is like thinking this guy's cool. Do I need to bring cool. a rose to a, a, a first date? Is that a genuine question you're asking? Yeah, kind of, yeah, because um, I'm like, I've never done that, uh, and it seems like, I mean, like, I guess it's like a, it's, it's a nice gesture. I think it leans into romantic territory. Definitely. Yeah, I don't know about a first date. Yeah. Second date, I think that, that could be. Second yeah. Date, you need yeah. to know, I would need to know the person. Right. If right. I knew the, the, the woman and I was like, okay, she might like this, then that's a fun thing to do. But what also my head goes to is then she has to hold that. Rose. Yeah, I, could, yeah, you take I would probably it. give it to her and be like, you could, you could throw it out. <laughs> you get <laughs> to like true. take it to the bowling alley and <laughs> take it to the ice cream place. <laughs> she tries to set it down. It's like, why are you setting it down? You need I gave you that. Do you not like that rose Keep I Keep holding you? the rose while you bowl. I gave you the gift of burden. <laughs> um, some comments here. <laughs> Reconsider the friendship. Uh, someone else said, 
It sounds like he was annoyed that you showed him up on the date. He is probably used to attention and thought being next to you would make him look better. Think Duff, designated ugly fat friend. Sorry, <laughs> just going based on your description. Girls care way more about thoughts and effort than just attractiveness. That's why you were getting the attention of both girls. Mm. OP responded, I knew from the start he was planning to use me to look better, but I wasn't expecting him to be rude about his date with Gene and blaming it on me. Um, lastly, someone said, LOL, maybe the only reason Gene agreed to date your friend was so she'd have an excuse to get Sam out on a date with somebody and Joel is salty about it. Don't worry about it. Sounds like you and Sam had a nice time and Gene is happy that Sam enjoyed herself. Joel is just being insecure. You absolutely should ask Sam to go out solo, even if you decide she's not for you, uh, not for you romantically. It sounds like you guys get along well and could be great friends. OP responded to that saying, I think I will ask her out. She mentioned she was into retro gaming and we have an old school arcade close to campus. Someone responded to that. Actually paying attention to what she said and then picking an activity based on that, this is the way. <laughs> <laughs> I also I also like imagine cuz cuz Sam is 19, like she's like I'm really into retro gaming. Have you heard of this thing called uh we? <laughs> Dude, I still have Angry Bird on my phone. Or yeah, yeah. I still have Flappy, Flappy Bird, Bird on my phone, yeah. on my iPod. I'm big into retro games. Yeah. Have you heard of Slender Man? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, it is like now. Oh God, yeah. Um, I feel like Joel should have come to him and be like, yo, here's the plan. You're gonna be looking real schlubby so that you make me look good. But obviously it's unfair to assume that he's gonna look one way. If he, yeah, if he was looking for a wingman situation, he should have told him. Yeah. But he, he, he prefaced it so differently. Yeah. I mean, if you're anything but supportive of your friend in a double date, you're just like shitty. Yeah. That's true. Uh, huh? he, he probably didn't realize that, that that was a red flag that Jean might have ca caught. Oh, I'm sure she like, picked she, up on like him gl like looking evilly at, over at Yeah. His she, she, I think it's just clear like this dude's a bit of a douche and these two yeah. girls knew it. But also, it sounds like he was spending more time being frustrated about his friend than actually being yeah. in the day. Gene. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe he's in love with his friend. <laughs> he sounds pretty great. So I don't know. <laughs> pretty good guy. Pretty good guy. All right, here we go. Am I the asshole for singing a song at my gay friend's wedding and outshining him? <laughs> this is a lot of outshining, right? Oof. These stories here. That's a good Why title. Why is it important that his friend's gay? <laughs> I guess we're gonna find out. I guess we're gonna find out, but like, why does he have you to qualify? You don't call all your gay friends gay friends? Look, like, gay weddings? <laughs> wildly That's... different from regular weddings. <laughs> That's starting to be a new trend I'm seeing in these stories is when someone adds adjectives that are completely unnecessary yeah. to the story. Uh-huh. But, but maybe we, we don't know. Maybe, maybe it's important it here. It might I be important. Know. Hi, everyone. This account is a throwaway. You know it's gonna be good. Oh, boy. <laughs> This is a 25-year-old woman. Uh, my friend Mark, a 25-year-old man, married his boyfriend James, a 26-year-old man, last week. The wedding was beautiful and one to remember for sure. However, something happened during the reception and now Mark is upset with me, so I came on here to ask if I was in the wrong. Mark didn't have any bridesmaids or groomsmen, but he did have a select group of people close to him to help out with wedding planning, which I was part of. During this stage, Mark approached me and asked me if I could sing at the reception. I have been singing since I was little, so I was honored to be asked to sing at my close friend's wedding. I told Mark that I gladly would. Well, the wedding day arrives, and the reception gets going soon after. After the speeches, I was called up to the front to sing, which, in my opinion, went pretty well. However, during the dance floor portion of the night, Mark came up to me and it was clear that he was upset about something. I asked what was wrong and he claimed that my singing took attention away from him and James on their big day. I was shocked. I told Mark that he was the one that asked me to sing at the reception, so I don't know why he was getting so worked up, and that I thought that he and James would have loved it. He stormed off and refused to speak to me for the rest of the night. For the past week, I have been messaging James to no response. I don't know if he's reacting this way to just stress or if something happened between him and James that he's taking out on me, or if it really is just that my performance outshone him because Mark thought it was too good or whatever. <laughs> Am I the asshole? There's, <laughs> there's so there, much we need some here. <laughs> There's some context we're yeah, missing yeah, yeah. here. I sang no, some song and it went really well <laughs> and now everyone's bad. I feel like there's gotta be a detail that matters that's not yeah. being mentioned, right? Oh, absolutely. Still missing the importance of it being a gay wedding. <laughs> yeah, no, it was that, yeah, we, we, we would have picked that up. Uh, a gay wedding. <laughs> um, so the verdict was asshole. 
which with that context, that doesn't with what they told, right? Yeah. If someone told me this in person, I think I would just be like, Weird. "Huh." I wouldn't be like, "Oh man, what the what the frick? They suck." I yeah. I would I would not really trust them, but I'd be like, "Huh." Yeah. Damn, that sucks. It's not adding up. But the verdict here is asshole. So I think. So there's more context. I think in the comments we are probably gonna get some uh, some insight. Uh, someone said, "Info, did you agree on songs and length of time to sing, and did you stick to what was agreed?" Ooh. The reason I ask is to try and figure out any way that you could possibly have upset him. On the face of it, the situation is bizarre. OP responded, "Nope, no requirements like that." Requirements? No okay, requirements. So they didn't specify anything. Okay, but we. That's leading me to believe that she's saying like a 45 minute yeah. song or something. She's like, hold on, one more song! One more song! She like did her whole set. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She brought the her whole, band. Whole, yeah, with all her songs. An entire were... Radiohead album. Yeah. Um, someone else said, there's a difference between singing a song and a full on performance. If this were simply a song, she wouldn't be doubting herself. OP responded, it was just a song. You know what? That brings up a good point. Why would you even ask, "Am I the asshole?" with what was written there, right? Yeah. Like I would, if I, if that were, if that was the entire story, there would be no reason to even question, "Am I the asshole?" Right. It sounds like this person came There's on here saying, "Please tell me I'm not the asshole," but I'm not going to give you full context that would show you that I was the asshole. I think, I think there's also we're still missing context because that first reply from OP that said, "Nope, no requirements like that," 98 downvotes. She's being dodgy. Yeah, and OP responding, it was just a song, 83 downvotes. It feels like you would volunteer, it was this song, this is the like the time it yes. was. Or is it Mark and all his that... friends and they found the threat? Oh yeah. They're voting it mm -hmm. down. Yeah, <laughs> 98 times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, someone else said, info, did you pick the song choice or did Mark and James? OP responded, I picked the song. Uh -huh. 255 down votes. <laughs> it's, it's seeming like this person just needs to volunteer what the song was. Yeah, just tell us, the tell song. us what the song was. So, someone goes, info, how long did you sing and what <laughs> did you sing? Yes. They're just demanding yes. it outright. Yes, you were asked, I can't help thinking that there's more here to this story. OP responded, I sang Good Lookin' by Dixon Dallas, uh, which has, 244 down votes. I don't, I don't know that song. I don't know it's, this song either. It's like a country song. But we have the chorus of the song. <laughs> He's bouncing off my booty cheeks. I love the way he rides. I can hardly breathe when he's pumping deep inside. I kiss him on his neck and then he kisses on my bussy. <laughs> Call him daddy while I holler. Man, that boy's so damn good looking. Looking, looking. Yeah, yes, play it, we want to hear it. We didn't want to get demonetized by playing the song, but just look at those reactions. <laughs> get ready for a lot of talk about Bussy. Okay, hold on. Oh. I I was not expecting like, <laughs> a country song with a country. I've never heard a country twang say Bussy. Bussy. Say kisses on my Bussy. Um, kisses that, that on my Bussy. Okay, well now that, okay, so now it's, it's making a little bit more. Yeah. Sense. Yeah. You know. And now, now there's a lot of context of why they said my gay friend's wedding. Like That's they true. knew exactly they what, knew, they what, knew what the what problem they, was. Yeah. Does she think this would be like sweet and inclusive, or? I think this is. This reminds me of we had a story where a uh, woman wanted to wear a dress to her gay friend's wedding that that was all covered in rats and stuff. There's a there's a meme online called like gay rat wedding. Okay. And she wanted to wear a whole dress that was like we support gay rats. Mm. And it's 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 oh. once again where it's like hey you're you're thinking you're doing something and you're not. There should yeah, there should be like a <laughs> there should be like um a subreddit called like when being an ally goes goes too far or whatever yeah. cuz like this is like it's trying too hard to the point that you become like bigoted. Right. <laughs> what I love is she's going, he's mad that I outshined him. And it's like, right. no, that's not what's happening here, lady. <laughs> you sing a like, song about kissing bussy. Wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like that's that's what kissing happened. Didn't she also say that I was just too good? 
Yeah, like, like, oh, I was just too good. Like, I, <laughs> I was expecting like Mariah Carey or something. Yeah, right. And like, there's, there's such a like, unless specified, unless Mark and James were like, hey, sing something nuts, sing something yeah. crazy and funny and stupid, then it's there'd maybe be yeah. some leeway. But yeah. they were just like, hey, could you sing a song? Right. Or no, if they gave she's home- saying that. That's vile. <laughs> it would be That's acceptable nuts. if they gave homework and they were like, hey, just choose any song, just make sure it has the word bussy in it, then we're good. Right. Yeah. Just give us that. That's all we ask for. It has for. to be a yeah. bussy song. Yeah. I, this is just nuts. I mean, yeah. The verdict is very clear on this one. Yeah. And her, what what makes her even a more of an asshole is writing this post and being in this much. She's not in denial, is what's funny. Right. She's leaving out the information so yeah, on she, purpose. So she knows obviously. what she did. Yeah. Like she thought it'd be a like she had to have thought like oh this is gonna be funny like everybody's gonna think it's so funny. You sang a song with bussy in it. <laughs> yeah. I think you need to go like okay I know the exact. Moment that upset my friend, probably. Uh, probably the pumping inside me. Yeah, yeah. it could have been that. Yeah. It could have been that. I, part of me is like, what, is English not her first language? Does he <laughs> not understand what these words mean? I, no, she she knows she damn well. No, she, she seems. I'm to trying know. to find some way that this person didn't know better, but it seems like it was almost malicious. Have you guys ever witnessed anything uh, as cringy as that at a wedding? Uh, at, like a wedding I've been to. There was like a. At my sister's wedding, there was like a guy that nobody knew that was like really drunk and gave like a really heartfelt speech about about my sister and her husband. And none of us knew who this guy was. Your sister didn't know who he was? I think he was like, maybe he knew the uh, my brother-in-law. Yeah. But everyone was like, what the, f- what's going on? Who is this guy? <laughs> Damn. And he was wasted and gave this, he was like crying and <laughs> gave this very like emotional speech. <laughs> and everyone was just like, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Uh, well, that's incredible. <laughs> that's an incredible story. Dude, I can't get now. That song is going to be stuck in my head. Yeah, yeah. my <laughs> pussy. I, I, there's, I'm going to wake up in the middle of the night with that lyric in my head. Next one. Ooh, this one already hurts. Oh boy. Apparently Spencer was consulted on this one and he was like blown away. And I'm blown away already. Am I the asshole for deleting my roommate's 100 hour game save? What the f (laughs) why why would you do that? (laughs) Holy shit. Using a throwaway. Hold on, which game? Oh, Ian, I already know how upset you're gonna be. Is it Skyrim? No, hold on. Ian's, we're, Ian's gonna be so upset in a second. Using a throwaway because my roommate follows my Reddit account. I, a 23 year old man, recently moved in with my college buddy, Mike, who's 24. We've both been avid gamers for years with a shared love of RPGs. When we decided to live together, we pooled our resources to get the latest gaming console and some shared titles. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt was one of our mutual favorites. Mike <laughs> dove in before I did and got incredibly immersed in the game. Over a month, he mentioned he'd put in over 100 hours, completing side quests, obtaining rare armor, and progressing significantly in the main storyline. A few days ago, eager to start my own journey in the game, I accidentally overwrote Mike's game save, thinking I was creating a new slot for myself. By the time I realized my mistake, his entire progress was gone. Mike was understandably livid when he found out. He explained how he'd painstakingly completed challenging parts of the game, and my mistake had undone all his effort. I apologized profusely and even offered to buy him a new game or help him replay parts of it, but he said it wasn't the same. Some of our friends believe it was just an unfortunate accident on my part, while others think I should have been more careful, given how much time Mike invested in the game. I genuinely thought I was setting up my own save slot and had no intention of erasing his accomplishments. But seeing how hurt and upset Mike is, I'm starting to feel like my negligence might make me the asshole in this situation. Am I the asshole? No, uh, no. uh, I don't think he's the uh, asshole, but God damn does that hurt. (laughs) It does paint a picture of his negligence in some way. Like what? I feel like it's kind of clear when you're delete when you're overriding. Well, it's pretty clear. It is pretty clear. Also, what's what's I don't know which gaming console, but I don't know why they didn't just make separate accounts on the the console. Oh, like the login. You well, have different. You have different. 
Yeah, but if you if you buy the game on one profile. Oh, oh they, if it's downloaded. Are. So here, here's a bunch of context. Someone someone has, someone wrote a novel in the comments. Okay. Oh boy. You're the asshole. <clears throat> We've both been avid gamers for years with a shared love of RPGs. When we decided to live together, we pooled our resources to get the latest gaming console and some shared titles. And a lot of not the asshole voters here don't seem to understand why this part is significant. The way the Xbox One uh, slash Series and PlayStation 4 slash 5 and Nintendo Switch, all platforms that The Witcher 3 work on, are designed in a way to negate the need to use someone else's account to play any games. The days of having designated save slots for different people sharing a console died in 2013. On all mo modern gaming consoles, even if one person digitally purchases a game on a console, all consoles are set up so that any other account can play that game and enjoy it with zero interference with any of the save data of anyone else. Everyone has their own free account and gets access to only their own saves. If it's, I, a, if it's downloaded? I think so. I, uh, this I is, don't know this about that. This comes from 2023, too. So uh, this is a PS5. It might be true. It might download to the console. I just haven't checked. But um, yeah. By being in a position to delete Mike's saves, it implies that you are playing on Mike's account instead mm -hmm. of your own free account, whether it be a PSN or Xbox or Nintendo profile. This is simply negligent. I'd give you a pass if you uh, just didn't know any better, but you describe yourself and Mike as avid gamers, and this is how console games have worked for over a decade. So you should have absolutely known better. This is just complete negligence on your part. You are absolutely the asshole in this situation. Get your own account and leave Mike's saves alone. I think, yeah, he definitely probably didn't change, o at the very least, he didn't change over to his account, mm -hmm. but still, like, if he hit new game, and then it asked if he wanted to, like, if he was going to save, it would have shown all the different save games. And it shows a little, it shows a little window of what's been played. It tells you how many hours has been played on that. And he could have very easily hit new save, like, saved on yeah. a new slot. Well, he was, I'm guessing what he probably did was he might have, he might have saved, like, what I did with The Witcher, because you make, decisions that can change and sometimes I'm like oh I don't know if this decision is going to be good so I'll save here and I'll save here and I'll maybe go back to this yeah. save so I'll have multiple saves running right so maybe he created multiple saves maybe he didn't realize I don't know I think it, it was definitely negligent it's definitely negligent knowing how Witcher 3 works too with saves um s someone said someone said info how did this actually happen do, do you not have your own game profiles on the console? That's why game profiles exist, to stop exactly this problem. Uh, someone else said, not to mention Witcher 3 asks before it deletes a save. Yeah. You have to accept before it will proceed. So no, no matter way it shakes, yeah. I feel like he had a moment and he was, maybe he was honestly there in college, Maybe he was high. I, like, like yeah. that's, that's yeah. honest to God, yeah. like, my that's assumption. True. Like, you weren't thinking right. It had to like, just be on autopilot, just clicking, clicking, Yeah, clicking. and it's like reading yeah. terms of service. Like, that thing that come, pops up that says, are you sure? You're just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably what the real issue was. And it's not even that he deleted the file necessarily as much as it's just that he just didn't care enough. He didn't necessarily yeah. respect the game. Yeah. OP put in the comments, Look, I fully acknowledge I messed up and I feel bad about it, but at the end of the day, it's just a game. I get the time investment and I respect that, but it's not like I did it on purpose. We all make mistakes and while I wish I could take it back, it's essential for us to keep perspective and remember it's a digital world, not the real one. I hope we can move past this. Uh, 402 down votes. Yeah, it's, but the thing is like, saying like it's just a game like negates like the fun and the experiences and the and the story that 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 guy was creating in that game mm -hmm. and now it's all gone so now that guy has to then play the same like annoying parts like yeah. and a lot of people didn't like the, like a lot of people thought the combat in the Witcher 3 was like kind of lame and so it's like you know there's parts of it that are kind of like kind of a like they're a bit of a slog. A big, a bit of a slog, and to have to go through all that again, I wouldn't do it. I would just be like angry and bitter. Well, and and also forever. what he's saying there is like it's just a game, but you're also disrespecting your friend's time. Yeah, like, yeah. that's a hundred hours, and it's something that they invested in for sure. What whether you think that time investment is just a game or just something silly, it's like hey man, he put time in that. That's yeah. that's huge. And I think OP is getting caught up on their intention. Like they didn't intend to hurt them and I think that they're like I didn't mean to hurt them it's not a real thing don't treat me like it's like I actually 
hurt you in like a physical way. But yeah, when you break it down to, to the amount of time, it's really about respect. Right. And it's that he didn't respect him enough to care. Yeah. And, and I think it's easy to get caught up on intention and then start making excuses to be like, well, it's not even a real thing. Like it's like I, I wasn't trying to hurt him. And right. It's more than that. That I was gonna say up until that comment, I was like, he's he's not necessarily the the asshole, like, cause he's offering like, hey, I'll buy you a game. I'm I'm so sorry. Like, but stuff like this comment is like, hey man, all right, don't don't now disrespect the situation. Yeah. Like yeah. acknowledge that you messed up. Um but uh it's a bummer. Uh last comment here. You're the asshole. He invested 100 hours of work into something. It doesn't matter what it is. It only matters how important it was to him. Was it a mistake? Yes. But I've seen you downplay his efforts with, it's only a game, and that isn't really the point at all. The point is the value to him, not to you, and that is why you're the asshole here. Someone else said, I agree 100%. Like, at the end of the day, OP, you are not a major asshole or a raging asshole, and it truly seems like a massive accident that you are actively trying to resolve, which is great. But to call yourself an avid gamer and then just dismiss a game your friend has spent a hundred plus hours on, in as simply just a game is quite wild. You should know that games can be a massive amount of joy for people. Seeing you try to downplay that makes you the asshole. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no real way to resolve or fix it entirely, but it does feel like OP could have taken ownership of the situation and yeah. said, basically, I'm sorry and I realize that, it, you know, Regardless of my intention, I hurt you, I disrespected you, and I'm gonna be you know, doing everything I can to show you that I do respect you despite my actions. Right. But instead of going that route, he was like you know, defending himself like, but it was just a game, it doesn't matter that much. If you really think about it, it's just digital. Yeah, it is a flip from being like, I'm an avid gamer and I love RPGs too. It's, it's just a game. <laughs> yeah. actually, it actually doesn't matter and it's stupid. OP said, only, it's only a game. Why you have to be mad? <laughs> um, this is this definitely hits home for me, and this is my fault. But I I played The Witcher Three up until like literally it, I was about to do like the final chapter. But I was like I'm gonna get all these side quests done. Kind of got burnt out. I stopped playing it, mm -hmm. and then I forget exactly what happened. I think I got a new console or some or some something happened, and in my, I might have accidentally overwrote my save and I lost all of it. And I was just like, oh. Did you replay and I, it? No. I was, it's, it, that, no game, it's, that game specifically can't. Skyrim, I would do it because there's like different things, but yeah. Witcher 3 is an awesome game, but to replay it, it's so It's very much. expensive. It's a slog, right? It, it, it's, it's very cinematic, which is cool, but it makes replaying it like, mm. all right, I got to really invest in this. And I don't, you know, you spend 100 hours on something new, to spend 100 hours on something you've already done, Yeah. That's a whole other But have piece. you played the expansions? <laughs> I never got to uh, Blood and Wine. I never, it, and I hear it's You don't even need to play the actual I know, base. I know. I Maybe I will at some point. So good. Am I the asshole for telling my wife to stop crying at Home Depot? <laughs> <laughs> at Home Depot? Specifically at Home Depot. Okay. I, I'm wondering if he said, stop crying at Home Depot. I thought, I thought you were gonna say like, stop crying at Home Depot ads. Like, <laughs> that's like, just so good. <laughs> uh, my wife, a 27-year-old woman. <laughs> sorry, it got me. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> my wife, a 27-year-old woman. Uh, <laughs> my wife, a 27-year-old woman, and I, a 27-year-old man, have been making trips to Home Depot to renovate our backyard. It's become a little date for us, and we enjoy the quality time. In March of 2022, my father-in-law uh, suddenly passed away from a heart attack. I am very close with my wife's family and supported her through the grieving process. On Sunday, my wife insisted I skip NFL and go to Home Depot with her, as our order was ready for pickup. When we got to Home Depot, there was an extremely long lineup, so I'm already annoyed having to wait. Out of absolutely nowhere, my wife starts tearing up and crying in the middle of this long line. I ask her what's wrong, and she quietly tells me that the gentleman at the end of the line reminds her of her late father my father-in-law, and she became very emotional and continues to cry. I got upset slash embarrassed and told her to quit being so random since it's weird. It's, <laughs> I, sorry. Stop uh, being random. Did you I, say so random? That's a tagline right there for you, Shane. I know. I, I got upset slash embarrassed and told her to quit being so random since it's a weird reason to cry, especially because the gentleman looks absolutely nothing like her father. 
I then told her she is tripping out for no reason and she ruined the vibe for Home Depot dates. <laughs> <laughs> On the car ride home, she called me insensitive and said it's not my right to talk about her father, even though it was obvious the Home Depot customer slash employee looked nothing like my father-in-law. If it was a doppelganger, I would understand. <laughs> bro. What? Dude. Oh my God. Stop, be, stop grieving, bro. We're in a Home Depot <laughs> on a date. So her father passed away a little over a year ago, uh, maybe close to a year and a half ago. So, I mean, in my mind, for a lot of people, that's still very fresh. Yeah. Especially if it's your father. And, and uh, you know, it, things work differently for different people. Yeah. Sure. To him, maybe it didn't look anything like yeah. it. But, but for for her, you never know. Yeah. yeah. I looked at it, she was reminded of, of her father, and he, and he just said, nah. -uh. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> You're not reminded of him. Yeah. You know what? You know that there's always like subtle things in stories. The one that makes me just know this guy is the asshole is on Sunday, my wife insisted I skip NFL <laughs> and go to Home Depot. I'm like, that's not necessary to this you, story. You wouldn't do that, Mr. Broncos boy? I would skip NFL. <laughs> wow. I, I also could skip NFL. Big fan. Did I'll just say, read about it at the end of the day. Did he say ruining the vibe of the date? Yeah, you ruined the vibe of Home Depot dates. I, uh, the one that you had to beg me to skip some other shit for that I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the one I didn't even want to go to in the first place. It's so insane. Also, man. I'm just now learning you can order, like, your Home Depot stuff ahead of time. And, and pick, pick it, it up. up. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe they placed an order that, like, maybe they got some stuff. Oh, it's like, like oh, shipped to... We home. have to, like, get it ready. So it'll be ready in a couple days, so you come back and pick it up, maybe, because it's a lot also, of heavy stuff. Yeah, and if you order online, there are some things where it'll say deliver into the closest store. Oh, okay. You can do that at Ikea. Oh, actually, never mind. I, I've done that before. Yeah. <laughs> oh, never mind. I do that all the time. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm doing that right now. Uh, some comments here. Not the asshole, obviously. Uh, how dare she embarrass you in front of random strangers at the Home Depot? At Lowe's, I could understand. <laughs> but Home go. Depot, no. You're standing there is much more important than her feelings. And it's not like you didn't comfort her. You correctly explained that the factual basis of her sadness was wrong. So at that point, she really should have changed her feelings back to happy, as we all can do. You're the asshole. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Okay. I love that. It's like... Obviously, he's not thinking about what is the outcome going to be if I say this, but I'm just thinking in his head, he's like, okay, I'm just going to tell her it doesn't look like her dad, and she's going to be like, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. I'm good. <laughs> no, he was, he was like, clearly embarrassed. It was, and... it was a matter of him being embarrassed yeah. and wanting to protect his own embarrassment. Dude, yeah. it's Home Depot. <laughs> like, who cares, man? You're never going to see any of these people. Oh, wait, there's maybe no... they go there every They're Sunday. On their Home Depot day. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no crying in Home Depot. Yeah, you Pretty sure they have an assigned cry at Home Depot. Yeah. Uh, you could just be like, oh, I got some sawdust in my eye. <laughs> uh, how are women marrying men with such horrifyingly low levels of empathy? Imagine breaking down over your father who passed away and your partner saying you're being random and ruining the vibes. I don't even have words for how much of an asshole you are. Uh, yeah, the, the saying so random is very funny. So random. That's it the most silly funny. circumstance to say so random to someone. And it's yeah. not random at all. She it, explained exactly why she was crying. Yeah, it's not. He's like, he thinks it's random because it's been a year already. Get yeah, over get it. get over it. He's I'm over it. Back. I'm over it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even miss him anymore. Yeah, I, for him to be like, I comforted her through her grieving process. Like, grieving just ends after, like, six months. It's like the process ended. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> that guy is, like, at least, like, 20 pounds heavier than your dad. Looks nothing like him. <laughs> that guy's way handsomer than your dad. Yeah. I, I mean, the, his wife was all... She was so respectful still, saying that he was disrespectful. Like, she could have blown up on him, said, you're an asshole... I'm still grieving, like you don't have any right to yeah. tell me if I should or shouldn't be grieving at any given moment. Right. But she just says you're disrespectful. Like, yeah, she was actually being very civil uh, yeah. in response. And then this OP, he's going on here hoping that some people are gonna be like, you're right, bro. Nice, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what a loser. Uh, also, it, putting myself in, in that space, if I'm out anywhere and I see someone crying, I don't think like, what a loser! Like, yeah. oh, how embarrassing! You're crying. Oh, I, I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I see someone crying, I usually am like, all right, if if they're with someone else who's comforting them, I'm gonna be like, all right, like, not my business. Yeah. And that's hopefully what most of those people at that Home Depot were thinking. Like, right. 
It, um, I wonder if he was like, dang, I, I have to comfort her. This is gonna like. Sorry, you're sorry. Like I doubt anybody noticed. That's true. That's also true. Like, it's not like she was like. I'm sure she wasn't like. <laughs> like I'm sure she was just like you know, crying. It's one of those situations where, and I mean, maybe it's sad to say, but I'm like, people don't care as much as you think they do. Yeah. Oh, people definitely. are at Home Depot. They probably are stressed trying to get their shit done. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what they're focused on. They used to be like, oh, someone, oh, she's crying. I wonder what she's crying about. Anyways, I got these two by fours I gotta buy. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what yeah. I'm worried about. Um, someone else said, I hope you're trolling, especially with the vibe comment. You're the <laughs> asshole. Grief hits at different times and anything can trigger it. It doesn't have to be logical. Even if the guy didn't resemble her dad, it reminded her of him in some way. It could be as little as a mannerism, a walk, or how they were standing. And it brought forth emotions. Have some empathy and compassion. Uh, OP in response to a now deleted comment. Uh, Thank you. I understand I was insensitive, but these comments are also making me think I was indeed being a huge asshole. Uh, 44 down votes. Oh. Um, which, I mean, hey, he was acknowledging he's being an asshole. Sure. It's the best you can do, I guess. No, he says, making me think. Maybe kind of sort of. <laughs> also, like, at least <laughs> I, I was thinking about this guy in comparison to the gay wedding woman. Where like at least he explained every part of it, sure. And like, and like then we just like immediately knew the whole situation. Yeah. Whereas like I the 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 gay wedding woman was like, I sing a song. So like a self aware asshole in denial. Yeah. Rather kind of, than yeah yeah. yeah. Um, maybe he was sitting there going, maybe I'm the one who's so random. <laughs> <laughs> no shade. You're you're so, so random. random. Thanks guys. This episode is brought to you by Factor. The busy fall season is in full swing and you're probably looking for some convenient, wholesome, delicious meals. Well, Factor, America's number one ready to eat meal kit is here to help you fuel up for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef prepared, dietitian approved meals that are delivered straight to your door and can be ready in just two minutes. I am a big fan of Factor. I've been a fan of them for years, uh, even before uh, they were sponsoring these episodes. Uh, I love them, they're so convenient, and I feel great uh, when I'm eating them. And uh, right now, in, during this fall, they have seasonal veggie uh, meals, such as cranberry pecan chicken and apple Dijon pork chops. Sounds so good, I'm adding that to my next order. What's so great about Factor is they offset 100% of their emissions from delivery and use 100% renewable energy for their production sites and offices. Head to factormeals.com slash pitreddit50 and use code pitreddit50 to get 50% off. That's factormeals.com slash pitreddit50 using code pitreddit50 for 50% off. All right, back to the show. All right, you guys ready for the next one? Yeah. I think so. This is uh, true off my chest. Concerned my daughter may have caught my husband cheating. Okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> I, was, I was bathing our two daughters, five and two, about a week ago. When I was drying them off, my daughter was talking about being naked and how you're only naked in private and for things like taking a bath. I told her, yes, that's true. Then she said, that lady was naked on daddy. I was confused. Oh. What do you mean? Daddy and that lady were naked there. She pointed to our bed. <gasps> what the f***? I asked her who the lady was and she shrugged like she obviously didn't know. <laughs> I can't think of what possible scenario she could have seen that could have been misconstrued as a naked woman on my husband. <laughs> my mind was kind of blown and I can't stop thinking about what she claims she saw. <laughs> he's on his phone a lot, always texting people. I haven't asked him why, he, why he's always uh, has his phone glued to him, even in the shower. I feel uncomfortable demanding he hand, it over, hand over his phone. He gets up very early to go to the gym now. Going to the gym isn't new for him, but he used to go after work. Now sometimes he goes before work and after work, uh. supposedly. He is constantly horny and has been for the past few months. I've asked him what's wrong with him. He says he doesn't know, but it's like he's 18 again and he's constantly getting hard and can't stop thinking about sex. He never had a problem in this area, but he was also never like this. He's become obsessed with sex and constantly wants it. At first it was flattering and I felt desired and he wanted it seemingly from me so often that I never imagined he could be cheating. Now I'm wondering why did he suddenly go from being a normal man with a normal health, uh, healthy sex drive to being like a teenage boy? 
None of these things by itself is super suspicious, other than what my daughter said. She doesn't know anything else and had nothing further to share with me about what she saw or what daddy was doing, and I don't want to involve her any further. What would you make of this? Do you think I'm being overly suspicious? Should I just come right out and ask him what in the hell our daughter was talking about? I've thought about it, but if he has something to hide, I don't think he'll admit to me that easily. Thank you for any help with this one. Whoo! Oh, man. man. I don't know why, like, the, 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 the image of, like, this, like, five-year-old girl with, like, a little, like, applesauce packet be like, I saw naked mommy and daddy. <laughs> She's like, what do you mean? She's like, I don't know. <laughs> and just, like, waddles off why it's, like, the, like, the, this is, like, the worst revelation possible. Either this five-year-old. Delivered by a five-year-old. <laughs> either this five-year-old saw some shit or this five-year-old likes to cause drama. Yeah. Already learned. Dude, she's gonna be such a great YouTube prankster in like yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 years. Yeah. She's gonna tell her mom in 10 years, you got pranked! <laughs> I broke oh, up my man. parents' marriage. <laughs> awesome. Uh, it made my life hell, but it was awesome. But I got two gifts now for Christmas. <laughs> two Christmases <laughs> achieved! Bro, you don't need a text in the shower. That's excessive. That's weird. Yeah. That's it, weird behavior. It kind of feels like he almost doesn't want his phone to ever not be around him as well. Just in yeah. case someone else sees a text coming in from someone. I'm trying to think of all the possibilities here. And, you know, the, like, jump in sex drive is strange like yeah. I, I mean not not that it's wrong it's just like she's just like he suddenly out of nowhere is like yeah this. Mm -hmm. i don't know what that could be the like going to the gym before and after work i'm like okay man it's kind of a tell as someone who that's goes to the bit. gym every day i'm like that's a lot there's a specific type of person who does that and you know who they are but for that to just suddenly be a behavior that you do is that's a big leap yeah um yeah. Especially when you Either have way, two, he's uh, coming you, home sweaty. When you have a two, I, I, I do think, I do think when you have a two and five year old, it's a little. This is my personal mm -hmm. opinion. I think it's a little irresponsible as a parent if you're going to the gym before and after work, unless yeah. you are literally a professional athlete. Sure. I'm like, hey man, that's like an hour or two you could go home and help your wife with a two and five year old. Yeah. Sure, yeah, I mean, it, it really does depend on a lot of factors. But yeah, if you're leaving the kids with the wife just so that you can yeah. work and go to the gym and be gone all day. Right, right. You're always on your phone, not paying any attention. <laughs> you're on your phone in the shower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Water <laughs> blasting, <laughs> they can barely hear him. He's I, like, I, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I truly don't understand because, like, when you get water on your phone, you can't like text. Like, it, I think he's. All, you have to be talking. I, I would assume he just wants texting. texting is just really bad. That's true. I mean, I was assuming that he just wanted to, to see any notification that came through, and kind of didn't want his phone Probably. to be out, like, on a countertop for Probably, his yeah. wife to see. Yeah. It feels like all signs are pointing to something fishy being up. Yeah, I don't think any one of. Any one of those things isn't like, oh, they're cheating. Yeah. yeah. But it is it is unfortunate that like there are things that are suspicious. Yeah. And and yeah, a lot of stuff with nowadays with phones is such a thing. Like uh, Yeah. Uh I kind of feel bad that she doesn't have someone to talk to. I know. I know. I don't know if she has any friends that she can like ask. Um there's some comments here. But how was a kid watching them? Was he supposed to be on duty parenting and he decided to fuck some woman while little kids were napping? If so, ew, that's despicable behavior for any dad. OP responded, this is what makes it hard for me to believe. I don't think my daughter is lying, but she might be confused. I just really cannot imagine him doing something like that in our home with our kids here. They're five and two. He's a very attentive dad. None of our doors have locks and our daughters have walked in on us before. Uh, someone else said, I think you either need to ask him or you need to look at his phone. Uh, in my opinion, if you're at the point where you're going to snoop through his phone, then the relationship is done anyways. Because even if you don't find anything, you just proved you don't trust him and invaded his privacy. That is uh, 24 down votes. Um, I, I don't know if I think that the relationship's done, but I think when you are that suspicious, you, like work needs to be done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whether something's happening or not, it's like, hey, there's a lack of communication if you are assuming this person could be doing all this stuff mm -hmm, behind your yeah. back. Mm -hmm. um, OP responded to that. I, I did slash do trust him, but it's hard to shake what my daughter said. I can't stop thinking about it. I thought we had a great relationship. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Sounds like he's become very distant in many ways, but then also wanting to just have sex all the time. Yeah. Um, lastly here, someone said, is it possible she saw you naked on top of daddy? OP responded, I feel like I would have noticed if a little one had come into the room when we were doing that. Why would she say she saw a woman she doesn't know? Uh, someone said, it's possible she only got a look uh, through the bedroom door or something, and that might not be enough for her to realize it's you. OP said, it's possible. I never thought I'd be praying that she'd see that, but <laughs> now I'm praying that's just what she saw. My daughter has seen me naked before in totally appropriate ways, but I can understand how seeing me in that scenario would be a totally different, uh, be totally different, and she would be confused about yeah. what we were doing. It's a possibility, I guess. It's just hard to believe that she would think it was another woman. Yeah, I think like I, I could, I, I could see that because like I think if you're like a kid, and you've never seen like a naked person before, it's just a very confusing sight, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think like. Uh, yeah, I, I could I could believe that, mm -hmm. and I don't know. Like I I think like if he's, I mean like I don't. I think all things are possible. I think like also, if he's working out more, that could contribute to a higher sex drive. My only the only other possibility I, the possibilities I'm seeing, the kids saw them, the kids saw another woman, or the dad has a sex doll somewhere. Oh. I I look, mean, I look, I'm, I'm literally assuming all possibilities. I mean, though. it could be true. But I think the kid would be like, that. Daddy had a balloon on him or something. Yeah. You know? I think there's some realistic looking things out there these days. Yeah, I, I don't, don't know. know. Let's, let's see, uh, because we have an update. Oh, okay. Let's go. Did yeah. she confront him? Let's find out. Uh, this was posted like about a week after the original post. This past Friday night, I brought it up to my husband. I didn't really want to bring our daughter into it, but I felt like mentioning this strange thing she said that she saw would be the least accusatory way to bring it up. Like, you'll never yeah. guess what she said. <laughs> His reaction was just to laugh, but it was a genuine laugh, not a nervous laugh. He said, yeah, probably when she peeked in the door like two weeks ago, but you were busy. He was laughing the whole time he told me this. He said, that time it took me like 30 minutes to finally come, that's why, I lost it. <laughs> Uh, he didn't want to tell me he lost it and I had to get back in the zone, if you will, because he knew I would have jumped off and ran to see what she needed. For that, I'm a little upset with him. What if she needed something, felt sick, was scared? He claimed she peeked in the door and immediately left. That he had noticed the door crack open, but she left and he didn't want to interrupt what, he, what we were doing to say, guess who just peeked in here? I don't know if I believe it completely because I still think it's crazy that, could, that I could have been that into it that I wouldn't hear the door open. Logistically, yes, my back would have been to the door if I was on top and he could have easily tilted his head so that she could one, see if it was him and two, he could have seen that uh, she was there and then left. How would she assume it was some random naked lady? He says I don't use my mommy voice during sex. It was dim in the room. I know too much about these people's sex. Yeah, we know <laughs> too everything. Much. They're, they're one sentence away from yeah. describing their genitals. Uh, like that. <laughs> so she peeked in. I was kissing on his bussy. And, and then, <laughs> Okay. Right, yeah. uh, it was dim in the room. She only peeked in and was probably very confused and wouldn't imagine her mommy would be naked and doing whatever weird things she just saw me doing, acting Shit. so funny. I kept telling him I didn't believe him. I didn't believe him. He was insistent on yes, it happened, and I didn't notice. I was really enjoying myself, and he's sorry if it makes him an asshole for not stopping me so I could run after our daughter who probably, probably needed something and just wanted to come sleep in our room, which she frequently does. He was like, seriously, you think I'm cheating on you and that I'd bring somebody here when I was alone with our daughters? He handed me his phone. I told him I didn't want to look at it. He insisted I look at it and go through everything to prove himself. I asked him what about uh, his increased sex drive. He claims he doesn't know why he's so horny all the time. He's just been working out a lot, eating healthy, and he claims he's just super attracted to me lately, like I got even more attracted to him since I gained about 10 pounds. Uh, I asked him about the multiple gym trips per day. He said that's just what works for his schedule right now and he just had a routine he's really into, but he can change it if it bothers me that much. I asked him if he's on anything. He was like, on any what? I said, anything that could enhance your results at the gym and also make you super horny. He said, no, I wouldn't take any of that stuff. 
I asked him about my pubic hair. Why so opinionated about it after years of not caring? He said it has absolutely nothing to do with anyone else. I removed way more hair than normal, sort of by accident, not too long ago. Too much. Like a few <laughs> months ago. <laughs> and he said he thought it was Instead really hot, just something different and fun, and it felt really good. <laughs> Did. Man, every single, this is the opposite of the wedding story. Yeah, uh, every detail, no one yeah, has. We're all like, okay. Uh, <laughs> he seemed to be hurt that I thought he might be cheating, but also found it ridiculous and almost humorous. I have to admit that I don't feel 100% about it, but that might say more about me than it does about him. I'm not going to install nanny cams or hire a PI. I'm going to try to do what I should do, which is to trust that what, that what he's telling me is the truth. Um, I... I think he covered his base. I think I trust him. If yeah. in that moment he goes, here, take my phone, look through everything. That's true. I, I, that's at the very least, that guy is so confident. True. Yeah. But I don't know. Because I, what I will say. It sounds like she doesn't trust him. Yeah. Going only based on the Reddit stories we've read, because I am not a psychologist or a couples therapist. But most of the stories we read where someone's cheating, there's like a. The, the sex is dead in the relationship, or it's or it's kind of lacking. Like, I know it can vary, but this just feels like they're doing great. She was feeling super confident up until the kids said this. Yeah. So there wasn't like a pattern of signs. She was only That's true. thinking about all this once that was said. It'd be different if she's like, for the past two months I've been feeling weird about all these things. You're and right. then my daughter said this. She's like, no, he's a great dad, great husband. We're having a great sex life. Everything's awesome. My daughter said this weird thing, and now, now I'm starting to look at everything. Yeah, she heard the daughter say that. I was like, "Oh my god!" and had yeah, flashbacks yeah. of like everything and put yeah. together all these yeah. facts that who knows if they connected yeah, or not. It but... seems like he covered his bases, unless he's like, unless he's like a pro cheater yeah. who's like always yeah. deleting all his messages and he's just like on it. I mean, there are but, ways to, oh, to be at that level. If you are that nuts, yes. <laughs> It would just be a lot of calculated things in order to make this cheating thing happen and to be able to cover it up like this. Someone in the comments said, classic Redditor plot twist. He saw the original post and deduced it was about him and had time to figure mm. out what to say to justify it with help from comments. No. no. <laughs> a crying laughing emoji. I mean, oh, sure, that's possible. Yeah, well, sure, but... sure. Uh, someone else said, everything he said was reasonable and he was so quick too. Didn't turn it back on you, didn't deflect, didn't accuse you of craziness. Then he just offered up the phone. I'd say believe him. He doesn't seem suspicious. That's also true. There's just, I know it's possible. I'm not saying it's impossible for him yeah. to have cheated. Yeah. But all of the signs that we've seen from previous cheating stories that come true, mm -hmm. I'm not seeing those signs in this one. And, and he also offered to change his schedule. He's like, if that doesn't work, then I can Right. Right. Yeah, it I don't require breaking up with the person potentially if that were the case. Yeah. Also from, I mean, of course, I don't know every cheating story in the world, but usually when people are confronted and they have been cheating, they will get angry. Yes. Yeah. And they, they will try to deflect. Yes. Exactly as you were saying, when he just kind of laughed it off, was like, well, there's this and this thing, but you could do this and I could change this and we mm -hmm. could work through if you're not feeling secure. He's he, He'd have to be a sociopath to lie that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Cause she was like, here's this thing. He's like, I know exactly what it was. And obviously people exist that would go that far, yeah. but it seems unlikely. It'd be very rare. And it would, uh, like I said, I feel like there'd be a pattern before this. But right. she's not describing any sort of pattern. Wow. Uh, someone else said, it sounds like you are the problem in the situation, to be honest. He sounds like a pretty reasonable guy to humor the amount of scrutiny you are putting on him. Uh, and someone else said, are you okay? He answered all of your questions, no matter how ridiculous. I think you need therapy or a glass of wine to chill out, like for real. Now, what I will say from her side is like, I think we've all been there where we something happens and we get suspicious about something, yeah. even if it's crazy. And if your 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 head's in it for like a week, that kind of becomes your reality, and you are delusional. But but it's it's impossible to just like jump back. Right. It's yeah, hard to just be like, oh, you're right. I'm being crazy. Yeah. All right. I'm also, good. Also, it kind of creates a rift in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Even rift in the relationship. Even if uh, it was just all in her head. You know, it's kind of that self-fulfilling prophecy situation where it's like, I thought this was the case, so then I started behaving as if it was the case, and now the relationship mm -hmm. is kind of, uh, our interactions together are as if it were true at this point. Right. Yeah. Even if it's not. Yeah, because sus suspicion can really rip a relationship apart because it's all built on trust. So if you don't have that trust, 
that relationship will start to decay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. she she has to try to remedy that on her side. And, and maybe it'll just and take it's time. it's good that she just like put it out there. Yeah. And and it seems like now that it's it's out there, they can move on. Right. And 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 he could now cheat without without her knowing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next story here. Am I the asshole for keeping prize money that my sister and her friends asked me to hold on to while they did their weight loss challenge and all ended up gaining weight? Oh. They're like, I guess I'm the winner here. You're not. Uh, what? <laughs> You just stole money. OP's username is I stole money one. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they just know it. They're, yeah, self-report. No... Up front, I'm going to say I wanted nothing to do with this. Last year on Labor Day, my sister and her friends came up with a weight loss challenge. Basically, they each paid $700 into a fund, and the, whole, and the one who Damn. lost the most weight this Labor Day would get the entire uh, $2,800. Uh, to keep it neutral, they wanted an impartial party to hang on to the money. I told her absolutely not, that I didn't want anything to do with this. She basically begged me, saying that this was going to be her motivation to finally turn her life around. So I agreed. The way it was supposed to work is they were going to text or email their numbers once a month. I would enter them into a spreadsheet and email it out. First month, everyone was enthusiastic and sent stuff right away. The second month, I had to remind them. The third month, I had to remind them again, and only uh, uh, only one even bothered to reply to me, and it wasn't my sister. The next month, I didn't care, and no one asked me about it. So we went for eight months, and no one mentioned it again. My sister hell? called and asked me who won. I said no one as far as I knew. She said I should give the money to her. I said that was ridiculous and she needed to get her friends involved before I did anything. That turned into the nastiest group text I've ever seen with cattiness, backbiting, accusations, etc. Finally, after three days of hundreds of texts, I told them all that none of them followed the rules. It looks like they all gained weight and I was more involved than any of them. I'm keeping the money. <laughs> no! Well, I think it's justified they think I'm an asshole, but I also think I'm right. Am I the <laughs> asshole? Everyone is fighting everyone over is, it. Everyone is, everyone sucks. Everyone, everyone sucks. No one's just like, hey, give it the money back. Yeah, Let's just, just start. everyone lost, give the money back. Act like none of this happened. Yeah, she's not, We what, what I need info on is what other people were asking for. Cause she said her sister said she deserves all the money. That The sister's the, an asshole there. That's yeah. crazy. That's she's also the insane. asshole for going, none of you responded, I'm taking the money. I'm like, you're also an asshole. What she should do is just spread the money back and like Venmo them all their yeah. money back and be like, I'm done with this. Yeah. I'm, I'm out. You guys yeah. all suck. That's a logical thing to do if you uh, don't want to drag it out. Right. No, th this is, we've had different situations like this where uh, so anytime a financial thing comes into play with a friendship or family relationship, uh, you go, is this friendship worth $800? Because you're about to lose it. Is the $800 worth mm. it to lose it? Because uh, she's about to lose all these people. Sounds like they don't like each other, any of them. No. Uh, some comments. What that is, is called theft. OP needs to return the money to each woman who paid into the pot. The money does not need, does not and never belong to OP. However, I have a feeling OP already spent the money, so there's that. Oh. Probably. You know oh. what? After a certain amount of months, she was just like, you know what, this is mine now. And then because the decision was made. Do you think that because what was it a year? What was it? Eight months? It, eight months had passed. Do you eight. think? Do you think they figured this is like typical bonehead move? I could spend this money now, and I'll just say, and I'll just save that money up for when it, when I need to pay it out. That's, yeah, that is a common mindset of stupid people. Or everyone forgot, and it's mine now. See, yeah, yeah. I I, I would hope for that, but man. At the very, uh, what I would have done is the first month where they nobody responds, I'd have been like, I'd have sent a group text being like, guys, are we still doing this? Yeah. I have 2,800 bucks on me. Yeah. Are you guys committed to this? Because if not, if you don't respond next month, I'm gonna Venmo you guys the money back. And, yeah. and we're done with this. It's also, this, this whole thing's kind of silly. To, admit, to force someone who doesn't want to hold on to the secretary. money, to hold on to the money and keep track of the records, when sure, you want to, uh, 
a third party to keep track of the records, but they don't need to hold the money. You could just say, at the end of this, we'll send the money that we all have. Yeah, it, it was a messy situation from the setup. Yeah. It was a bad idea from also, the get-go. Also to just like incentivize people to just like purely lose weight and and have that as the metric for like it's, getting it getting is, healthy. Yeah, yeah. Weight is not a metric of health. Yeah, <laughs> it's not, they, and like, it's also on... works so differently per person that yeah. it's a dumb it's a dumb thing. To and if do. they put on muscle, like they won't be losing as much weight as somebody else. So who's then they're like... discouraged from <laughs> from actually <laughs> actually getting <laughs> from healthy. Working yeah, out I imagine they all like if they all like committed to it that they're all like doing like the like the wrestler like fighter thing where they're like losing as much water weight as possible for weigh in. Yeah, you know. Like. Yeah. I also agree. I think the metric should have been way different. It should have been like steps taken, or like I don't know. There's other better metrics of yeah. like let's all come up with come out with a goal. But you take a group of people; they all have very different bodies. You're gonna lose weight at such different rates, and right, one person's gonna have to lose ten percent weight. One person's gonna have to lose twenty percent. Yeah, no, it, this was this was dumb in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, Someone else said, you're the asshole, this is ridiculous, give the money back, there's no argument that it belongs to you. OP responded, hi, to be clear, I'm asking, am I the asshole? Not if the money belongs to me. I think it does. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! You know what? You know what? Respect. <laughs> yeah, true. You know what? If you're gonna be committed to being that shitty, all right. <laughs> this person is just a straight up thief. They're like, I, I committed theft. I made it my username. I am it's completely so aware that I stole money, but was I an asshole about it? It's so funny that they're just like, they're like hey, this is me. Uh, yeah. Someone said, you're the asshole. I would be willing to wager you already spent the 2,800 bucks, and that's why this is your take. Your username gives it away. <laughs> be prepared for them to take you to small claims court. OP responded, I have 28 $100 bills right in front of me. Someone what? said, I hope your sister never talks to you again. OP responded, <laughs> and nothing of value would be lost. Oh, shit. I, this one, okay, maybe this one's a troll post. <laughs> it kind of seems I, trolly. It it's, a, it's a little trolly just in the responses and stuff, <laughs> but it's a damn good story. No. And I'm sure stuff like this has happened. Yeah. Uh, we have already dealt with so many stories of money just being a huge problem for people. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me too of any story I've heard about people winning the lottery. Oh, yeah. Where it's yeah. just, boom, a yeah. nightmare. Ruins lives. Uh, so this next story, a uh, bit of a trigger warning. Uh, women in unsafe situations. Uh, so you can skip to the next story uh, if you want, um, if that's not something you want to hear about. So here we go. Uh, true off my chest. Do guys really just not get it? Mm. I was out with my friend Mark a little while ago and we had gone to a very popular restaurant downtown so we had to park three blocks away from the restaurant in a parking garage. We each drove our own cars and I parked on the third floor and he parked on the fifth. It was past 11 when we left the restaurant so other than a few bars, everything was closed down so we were pretty much alone as we reached the garage. Once we got into the elevator, we could hear a bunch of guys who had obviously been drinking, shouting, and laughing on one of the floors. We stopped on the floor where I had parked and saw the group of guys between the elevator and my car. They looked towards us, and one of them said something like, I bet she's not as stuck up as those girls at the bar. Oh. It made me really nervous, and I asked my friend if he would walk me to my car. He said he didn't want to wait for the elevator again, so I asked if he would watch me walk to my car at least. He sighed in an annoyance and rolled his eyes and finally agreed. I pulled out my keys and arranged them so there was a key between each of my fingers and clenched my fist. This earned another sigh from my friend. I got out of the elevator and half walked, half ran to my car, hugging the outer wall to put as much distance between me and the group of guys. I waited until I was almost at my car before unlocking it, hopping it, hopped in, and got out of there as quickly as I could. A few days later, we were hanging out at my house, having a game night with a few other friends, and Mark decided to share the story of our last night out and how ridiculous I had acted. One of the other guys laughed and said, we're not all looking to jump a girl in a parking garage. One of my girlfriends spoke up and said, we have no real way of knowing if someone is dangerous or not 
that most girls have had a bad experience with someone that they never would have thought that they were the type to do that. Friends, family, parents, friends, coworkers, etc. The conversation quickly moved on to another topic, but I was sitting there thinking of a few of the times that guys in my life just didn't seem to get that we have rules that we follow. My ex-husband would get so frustrated when I would ask him to lock the door if he was leaving if I was going to be the only one home. My brother is trying to help me look for apartments on a budget and not understanding that I will not take a garden or first level apartment as a single girl. A Tinder date not understanding why I check in with a nearby friend uh, the first few times going out with them. My friend, uh, who was my roommate for a couple of years, not understanding why I look out the peephole and put the chain on before, o the, before opening the door if I do not know the person knocking. There are many other examples, but thinking about all this just makes me wonder, do guys really not get it? Um, edit, I am not trying to bag on men with this question. I know there are decent people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I, sadly, I think a lot of guys don't. I, I yeah. Th I think it's I, yeah, yeah, sure. I, I think I think oftentimes maybe it's like if men don't have close relationships with other women, mm -hmm. like that aren't you know maybe they're like significant other or something. Like maybe that's where it comes from. I don't know because I think if you like if you're in enough situations where you're like listening to your friends talk about life yeah those stories always come up yeah i mean uh because i've had a lot of friends who are women since i was a teenager and uh you just would hear about it constantly um for sure i mean just every every single girl i know has stories from last week you know like yeah. it's not yeah. just like oh this one time 10 years ago it's like no here's a constant thing that happens i mean if you're out anywhere and you you just kind of observe you'll see that men behave strangely around women all the time, mm -hmm. you know? And I think one of the issues uh, and one of the reasons that many men just don't get it is because many people were taught when they were young, treat others like you would like to be treated or like think about if you were in their shoes. And the issue is that you can't just be like, oh, but if I were you, I, I wouldn't be scared when you are not a woman uh, of right. whatever right. size and shape and whatever, like you, you cannot, actually imagine what it would be like to be them unless you think outside the box of who you are. Right. So you're like, I wouldn't care, so why do you? Like, that's right. just, it's. Right, or or putting yourself, like, they th that person putting themselves in the shoes of, like, being that guy in the parking garage. I mean, like, well, if I was in a parking garage with my friends, I wouldn't bother you. Yeah, that's true too. Like, that's, that's, yeah, like, that's oh yeah, too. I'm I'm a good guy, so those guys are probably good too. It's yeah. like, right. no idea, those are strangers. Yeah. You hear stories all the time about fucked up stuff happening, mm -hmm. and you kind of just have to assume that it could happen right. to you. And at the very least, even if it was an empty parking lot, or even if it was a safe space, you have a friend who's like scared and saying, "Hey, can you walk me to?" Yeah. The car? It's like, dude, dude, I'm afraid that. walking through like an empty parking lot. Yeah, I mean, garage. I am sure, too. Sure. Like that shit's spooky. Yeah, uh, it's strange to me if someone's like, "Hey, could you walk me to my car?" I'd be like, "Yeah, dude, of course." Right. And that could be anybody. Yeah. If if if, if I had a friend who was a six foot five dude and he was like, "Can you walk me to my car?" I'd be like, uh, "All right, man." Like, <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. scared. Yeah. And it's like, this guy is saying, I feel safe, why don't you? And it's like, okay, if you feel safe, then walk them to their car, and then you go off by yourself because you feel safe and walk to your car alone. Exactly. It's like, dude, okay, you're gonna miss the elevator. Whatever, who cares? <sighs> yeah, yeah. They were more concerned about their, you know, 30 seconds than they're not really their friend. They're not really aware or considerate of their friend's feelings, it seems. I think they're just lacking empathy. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, comments here. I'm a man and everything you describe seems sensible to me. I think a lot of people, both men and women, sort of have this attitude that things happen to other people. Mm. I think it's kind of a coping mechanism so you can look out at the world and say, nope, that's just that stuff ha that happens to other people. Mm -hmm. I live in a safe world. Yeah. OP responded, uh, most women I know really do not have the privilege of thinking that way. I was essayed when I was nine and have taken reasonable precautions ever since and still had other things happen as I've gotten older. I know out of my girlfriends, out of probably 10 of them, nine have been harassed or assaulted. 
Someone else said, my favorite comment that made everything click for me as a guy was when a woman said, imagine you as a guy walking down the street and half the people on the street are 300 pound NFL linebackers. <laughs> yeah. They also want to f you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not going to lie, that did make me feel very uncomfortable to go outside, but that's how it is. Nothing against 300 pound linebackers, just not my jam. Uh, OP responded, that's exactly a great way to explain it. I'll try to explain it to my one friend who commented when Mark told the, told the story as he grew up pretty sheltered within the church so he can be a bit naive, but I don't think there's any hope for Mark. Yeah, I mean. I mean, I think there might be hope. <laughs> you just maybe have to explain it way more simply to him. Yeah. Like, hey man, I'm, I'm scared. If I have to walk there alone, even if you're just watching me, I'm gonna be really fucked up. Yeah. You as a friend, I'm asking you as a friend to come with me. Yeah. That would be you as a friend doing a favor for me and showing that you care about me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna say no to that, then I am assuming you actually don't give that much of a shit about me and I don't wanna be your friend. I had I had to try to explain this actually to to a relative like a few months ago cause, cause they're like an older guy and they were like, you know, I'm just I'm just being nice, like walking on the street, and like, you know, if there's like a woman and sh and she doesn't say hi back, mm -hmm. and and they're like, I'm just I'm just being nice, like I always say hi to everyone walking on the street, like, and I was like, yeah, but they they don't know you, like they don't they don't know who you are and what you're like capable of and and what your what intentions, your intentions are. are, yeah, and and there's been many instances where they could have reciprocated and then a bad thing could have happened. Right. Yeah. Or they could have been harassed or whatever. And they didn't really get it and I tried, but you know, it's, yeah, it's common. It's just a very self-centered point of view, um, unfortunately. Yeah, and once you're harassed or assaulted in any way at any point, you kind of, you realize that you need to always be aware, especially if being aware was the only thing that prevented it from getting really, really bad or going further in some way or getting you killed or whatever. You are like, I need to always be aware because if not, something really bad can happen. Right. The mindset that Mark in this story has is a privilege of not having ever experienced exactly. that. Exactly. You yeah. can believe you live in a safe world if your world has always been safe. Yeah. But someone who's gone through something, they're like, well, I, I can't convince myself of that. Right. And if, I have experienced stuff. If something happens to Mark, he might, unfortunately, you know, it, it, that situation could be the thing that completely changes his point of view. Oh, yeah. I get it now. Right. Um, all right, moving on. Here's our last story. Uh, Whew, it's gonna be spicy, I feel it. Okay, let's see. Am I the asshole for looking out for my new coworker by telling her that her food might be upsetting to others? Oh, I already know what oh, this is probably gonna God. be. I've, oh. We've experienced this before. We love, we love a good, like, okay, here we go. Is and it spicy? Is it spicy food? Hold on. I, 32-year-old man, white. Okay. <laughs> okay. We wait, already can, know oh, what it okay. is. Should we take bets on on what kind of food this is? <laughs> okay. I, I I can't. I'm. Okay. You guys can take bets though, if you want. I think it's gonna be like like a whole animal. Like it'll be like. Oh, that's why it's upsetting. Yeah, because like Americans, we're just used to like getting like our like fillets, you know, and not seeing yeah. like parts of the animal, you know. You think so? Yeah. Unless yeah. you're da the only person I know here is Damien. Well, he has ordered a whole fish. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Where it's like every, it's the entire fish. Yeah, yeah. I think it's something not visual. I think it's about the scent of okay. whatever the food. That is. makes sense to me. Yeah, let's see. Right. Let's see what this 32 year old white man <laughs> can't relate. <laughs> I, a 32 year old male, white, am potentially in trouble at work, but I don't really think I deserve it. My coworker, Anna, 23 ish, uh, female, Asian, is new at our office and she brings her own lunch on days we don't have a food truck. On Thursday, yesterday, she brought in a homemade stir fry and used our shared microwave in the break room to do it. I was in the room when she took it out of the microwave and it smelled heavenly. I asked her about the recipe and she told me it was just a bunch of ingredients and spices thrown together so as to not waste any veggies that might go bad soon. When I was telling her how good it smelled, I also mentioned that some other people at the office might think it would be too smelly or ethnic, as in racist people tend to look down on ethnic things. 
I have read those kinds of stories on here about microaggressions when it comes to people of color and the food they bring in, and I wanted to warn her that she might not want to bring it anymore, uh, bring it in anymore, so it doesn't happen to her. I emphasize that it smelled good to me personally, though. I guess a couple of other coworkers in the room overheard our conversation because after Anna left the room, some of them sort of quietly told me how it was inappropriate for me to have said that. I told them that it's true that ethnic food gets ridiculed for smelling too strong and that I disagreed with that sentiment, but I also think she would face less harassment if she didn't bring that bring in that food anymore. Oh, wow. One of my other coworkers then said that I was the only one harassing her and making insinuations that her food is problematic, plus the fact that she hasn't even uh, been bringing in her own food that often since she just started last week. So there couldn't have been an opportunity to have had this hypothetical harassment happen to her. I just wanted people, yes, even the assholes at the office, to make her feel welcomed. I left work that day, not thinking anything of it, until the following morning where I heard from a different coworker that Anna talked to our HR department about the conversation and how she was hurt. I'm a bit frustrated as to why she didn't talk to me about it first, since it was just a misunderstanding and that I'm looking out for her. I did notice that today she was trying to dodge me, which is unusual and a bit heartbreaking. I just want to work things out. I wanted to be a friend to her and help her out since this is one of her first jobs out of undergrad, but this has been blown out of proportion. Now my coworkers By think who? I'm racist, but I really tried my best to be an ally. But then again, what do I know? So am I the asshole for telling her that her food might be too much for other potentially racist people in the office to handle? <laughs> okay, this is so funny. This is because this he's is, like he's like just I look, I read all about microaggressions, so I'm just trying to prevent you with your smelly ethnic food uh, <laughs> from offending racists. Look, I've read all about microaggressions, so I'm really good at it. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, that food, that food smells amazing, but watch out, there are racists here who don't like ethnics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you. you better be careful. <laughs> now, that, none of them are gonna say it, but yeah. I'll say it for them. Everyone's thinking it. The food was stir fry. Stir fry? Stir fry, vegetable okay. stir fry. With vegetables and spices. Vegetables and spices. And he, and this guy's saying it smelled incredible, but he's like, ah, oh, but other people might have here. Don't I don't know about them. There are racists here. Um, it was like 100%, 100% a microaggression. It was, it was in fact a microaggression. Yes, unprovoked. Well, and also, he, the, the, the thing is this, if there, are, if there are racists in this office who are gonna complain, you as an, I, may, may, let, me, let me see if I know what, it, what, what would be the right thing to do as a 32 year old white man. Uh, <laughs> the thing to do is if someone were to say something to her, you go, hey, fuck off. Yeah. But instead he's going, you shouldn't bring this in. Yeah. You just did the racist thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By telling her not to bring in her food. Like preemptively, let's make sure to satisfy the racists here. Yeah. Look, you should start bringing in more white people food here. Yeah. We don't want you to offend the white racists. I'm not yeah. racist. I think it smells great. I love it. But there are racists lurking. I love it. <laughs> but for those other people, you gotta Look, stop. I love whatever this this thing. What do you call this? Stir fry. <laughs> yeah. What are that? What, what vegetables? <laughs> One I thing don't I'm know. good at identifying is stuff that might offend the racists. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very good at that. <laughs> um, dude. Insane, insane to be like, yeah, other people are racist in here. Anyways, <laughs> you need to do the work uh, to, yeah. and, and change your lifestyle hey, for that. You might offend a racist. I think we could also file this into the when 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 being an ally Allyship goes, goes in. when ally goes wrong or ally yeah. goes too far. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> bad allies. Uh, some comments here. You're the asshole. Your coworker is a grown woman who's been Asian her entire life. Do you genuinely think she's unaware that racism exists? All you did was put her on edge around coworkers who may not even be racist. Congratulations, you're the one who created the microaggression. And he said it in front of everyone too. Like yeah. not even a private. Not that yeah. that would have made it much better. He really, he really pissed off everyone at once. <laughs> yeah. Which is yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> By being an ally. By being an ally. Damn, that's what I get for being an ally. <laughs> <laughs> You're the asshole, you are not protecting her from racists. You yourself are being a racist. If you're trying to convince us slash her slash yourself that you're an ally, you might be more than a bit delusional. Also, stop trying to hang around your young coworker, LMAO. <laughs> that also is in my head. I'm like, you saw an opportunity to be like, cool to this 23 year old Yeah, yeah, coworker. I got life figured out up yeah. here. 
Uh, I know things around here. I've been on this earth for nine years longer than you, and if there's one thing I know, it's that racists are here. Look, yeah. I watched the Green Book. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, you're the asshole. You came off like this. Some people might say that your food is smelly. Not me, though. But some people. <laughs> And then you proceeded to call her food ethnic. You might as well have worn a shirt that said some people on it <laughs> with an arrow pointing to your face. It doesn't sound like you were ill-intentioned, but sometimes you just have to give a compliment and let it be. Yeah, like, I don't know. I, what the hell? Um, yeah. There's an update. It's an edit slash update. Oh. Some people have said to edit this post to add this. Some people. <laughs> some people. He started it with that. Yes, I get it, I'm the asshole. What I said was really stupid. If it means anything to you guys, I remember entering the workforce as a young man shadowing assholes, and I didn't know how to express how shitty I was treated since I thought it was normal to be treated a certain way or overhear certain things. I just thought she was a sweet girl who didn't deserve to see the nasty side of corporate life so quickly, but I guess I ended up being like the guys that made my earlier career so god awful. Anyway, I want to apologize to her in the most HR-friendly way this Tuesday. Hopefully she doesn't quit, but I also don't want to be the one that gets fired. Fingers crossed. Thank you for opening my eyes, and I hope to, to do my due diligence to be a real ally. To be a real ally. A real yeah. ally. Yeah. Um, <sighs> okay, I mean. Yeah, I mean, like, I think some people just try too hard, and they just yes. don't realize, like, their own biases and like, yeah. I, I don't know. Like when you're like going like too far off the deep end and uh, into like allyship, where where it's like you're making everything about this interaction about their race, yeah. Which then in turn is a micro. I also think in my mind, like I said about this being a young woman, is I think this wasn't him being an ally. This was him being selfish, and he thought this was an opportunity to make himself special. Yeah. Like she's new. Um, he look. May, I don't know what the situation, how he feels about this this girl. But I just thought it's like, oh, she's oh the new girl's here. Let me show her that I'm actually the coolest guy in this office. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about making her feel safe. It wasn't about being an ally. It was about him. Yeah. Is my personal interpretation off this story? I could be wrong. Also, she's like 23. She's she's like she's an adult. She's like, she's like for her to, for him to say like. Oh, she's like sweet, and I didn't want her to like be ruined by this corporate environment. It's like she chose a job there. There's also like, some mild racism in that of like the well, sweet, could, innocent. Yeah, there could yeah. be some some of that. Uh, sure. I my my take on this is like, look, man, if as an ally, like if you witness racism, then stand up for that and like fight back against that. Don't preemptively tell this person to change their lifestyle. That's yeah. Right. I mean. Yeah, to be like, to putting all his attention on her race yeah. and the type of food is the definition of microaggression. Yeah. To be like, hey, you're totally different than me. Right. But I get it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, man, couple uh, insane allies in this one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the whole ally and a, and a bad and a, really funny. And, a, and another a bad ally who was like, I gotta get, get the elevator, dude. I'm sorry, you, you're you fine. Um, <laughs> uh, well, crazy stories. Wow. Nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wanna hear that whole bussy song. Guys, yeah. we're gonna go listen up. to the bussy song. Yeah. But, uh, thank you both for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for teaching me about, you know, kissing on my bussy. You got it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime. And thank you for watching. Uh, let us know what other types of themes, subreddits. If you want to see a bad ally episode, <laughs> let us know in the comments. Or a gay wedding episode. Ooh. Ooh. And next week, we have Zach from the Try Guys here. Woo! Uh, Let's it's go. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. So we'll see you then. Bye. Kissing on my pussy. <laughs>